Guys, I'm still up. I'm still up. This is crazy. It's 2.30 in the morning and I'm still up. I've been listening to this track, Pusha T, Story of Adidon, Sis and Drop. I've, I don't remember the last time I've done this. The last time I've actually listened to a disc record this long just to analyze everything. I don't think I've ever done this. This is how powerful this track is. And I'm on social media and, and, and you know, following hashtags and learning more and more about the this record that Pusha T did and understanding and breaking down some of the lines. So I'm going to I'm going to actually break down the lines from the disc record from my perspective. As you can see, I just saw this tweet from Torre, which I did not know. And I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you don't know. He says. Adidon is the name of Drake's upcoming Adidas line, and now that name will be associated with this beef. And Pusha's monstrous diss track, Pusha has, in effect, screwed up Drake's brand before it came out. Wow. Just wow. And on my previous video, I said, you know, I, I, I totally forgot that he was, he was, he was rhyming over the story of OJ by Jay-Z. And if you watch that video, it shows black characters, black animated characters in blackface. This is how precise and surgical and detailed Pusha T is. This guy is very methodical. Very methodical, man. It's crazy. Um... And right, it's already affecting Drake before he even came out because uh, I had it up here in one of my tabs. I have so many tabs open, forgive me, family. Um, <laughs> so many tabs open. Uh, let me see here. Try to find this clip here. There's so much to talk about, man. There's just so much to talk about. Um, this is a screenshot of the photographer right that uh took a picture of drake in blackface and he says here ask drake i captured his idea there's really no explaining to do when you're a black person when you're classified as black you know drake sees himself as black the world sees himself as black even though he's quote unquote biracial if you're classified as black and you're in blackface there's only one narrative that you're doing that for and that is cooning that is cooning buck dancing shucking and jiving for the dominant white society for the white man there's no if ands or buts about it there's no explaining to do there's no artistic expression you were just cooning this picture right here he was just cooning and you notice i didn't i just noticed is also about the shirt he's wearing he's wearing a, a jim crow shirt a Jim Crow shirt. I saw some tweets trying to break this down. A lot of the, uh, I guess, you know, the Drake stands and followers trying to break this down. Oh, this is artistic expression and trying to, you know, trying to show reflection of racism and, and sides from, you know, the black side. And the, This is straight up cooning. This is straight up cooning. I notice a lot of people, I'm also checking out other people's responses to uh, the diss track. Nobody's addressing this damn photo. This is right here it's in terms of imagery, the most powerful image that you can that you can flip on a mainstream entertainer. Drake is a mainstream entertainer. He is forever, in, in my eyes, forever remembered as a dude, a black dude in blackface. That's how I see Drake from here on out. He is a black dude in blackface. That's how I see Drake. This is a, for, <laughs> like I said, this was a, a brilliant, a brilliant move by Pusha T. I am thoroughly impressed. I am thoroughly impressed with his response. It's just so much to talk about, family. Like I said, I'm going to try to, Break this down as best as I can.
um, from the lyrics that he has. So I'm gonna kind of break this down, man. This is a picture of uh, his alleged baby mama. If you Google the name Rosie Devine, it checks out because she has videos on Pornhub. <laughs> I have not seen, um, but she has videos on Pornhub. And here's some pictures right here coming up with Drake right here. So everything checks out, man. So far, so good. It checks out. But let's go to the lyrics real quick. I'm going to try to break this down from my perspective as best as I can. So let's start with the intro. It says, uh, easy money. So right there, he, he sets the mood like, yo, this is, this is easy money. I, I'm, I'm gifted with the pen. I'm going to chop his head off. Easy money. It's about to be a surgical summer. Chop the tops off the coops. The Spanish word, which I'm not going to, I'm going to bush if I, I have to remember what he said, but it's a Spanish word right there. The spider joint, and you know we got to cut the heads off these snakes, right? Watch the body drop, and this is where he begins his verse. So he sets the tone off by saying, yo, drug dealing aside, ghost writing aside, let's just talk about facts from his perspective, right? We're not talking about me selling drugs. Because people talk about all I talk about is, you know, selling coke and, and, and being, uh, you know, the only rapper that sold more drugs than me, than me is easy. -E. We're not talking about that. I'm not going to bring up uh, your ghostwriting affiliates. We're not going to bring up Quentin Miller, Quentin, whatever his name is. We're not going to bring none of those guys up. We're going to talk about facts from my perspective. So he says, let's have a heart to heart about your pride. Even though you're multi as a multi millionaire. I see that your soul don't look alive. That's a double entendre. Drake has a song with uh, JB Blockboy called Look Alive. Right? So he's, that's a double entendre. Your soul don't look alive in the literal sense. And Drake has a song out called Look Alive. Right? That's, again, that's a great, great bar. The M's, as in millions, count different than baby divide when baby divides the pie. Wait, let's examine why. Your music for the past few years been angry and full of lies. I'll start it at home front. I'm on one. He's talking about the single that dropped six years ago with Ross, Wayne, Khaled. I'm on one. Dennis Graham, stay off the gram, bitch, I'm on one. Dennis Graham is Drake's father. Okay? I'm going to bring him up in a, in a second. You mentioned wedding ring like it's a bad thing. Your father walked away at five, hell of a dad thing. So he's basically saying that Drake's dad, Dennis Graham, wasn't in your life. He left your mom at five five years old he says uh marriage is something that sandy never had drake so his father left his mother at age five his father never married his mother sandy never experienced marriage so therefore him mentioning virginia williams which is uh pusha t's fiance he's saying that Drake doesn't embrace marriage because he has a history of failed relationships or failed marriages, right? So that's what Drake, that's what he's painting Drake as, as a guy who's afraid to commit to a relationship as far as a female, right? But it gets better. He says, um, Marriage is something that Sandy never had, Drake. How you a winner, but she keep coming in last place. So he's basically saying that his mother, Sandy, was always mistreated because she never got married. She was never involved with the father, which is Dennis Graham. And the father mistreated both the mother and Drake growing up. They never had a bond and never had a relationship, which again, when you have, when you grew up in a home, a broken home and you have, you know, um, 
you don't have a relationship with your father or your mother and you grow up, you're reflecting that same ideology because of epigenetics. You're not, you're, you're afraid to be committed in a committed relationship. That's what uh, Pusha T, he's, he's, he did a brilliant job painting that narrative. You know, talking about his father not committing to his family and then treating his mother like pretty much garbage. All right, so here he says, um, how are you a winner, but you keep coming in last place? Monkey suit Dennis, you parade him. Talk about his father, Dennis Graham. Now he refers to, he says, monkey suit Dennis, you parade him. A Steve Harvey suit nigga made him. Mm. He's talking about Steve Harvey suits, right? Um, let me see, I got some photos of him that are hilarious. Uh, let me see. Where is it at? Okay, here it is. See? <laughs> That's his father. As you can see, there's a suit. It looks like a baggy Steve Harvey suit. Like one of them old suits that uh, Michael Jordan, all those NBA players in the, in the, in the late 90s or early 90s when was wearing. Them baggy suits, the chopper suits. That's what Aubrey Graham's father, Dennis Graham, is, is looking like right here in this photo. And here, here is Dennis Graham right here. See, this, I, like I said, man, Pusha T did a great job of uh, researching. He got a team behind him. I don't know if, if Kunye is helping him research, but he got a research team behind him. This is his father. He's, so he's painting. He perfectly, perfect, perfectly surmises uh, Drake's father and what he looks like. This is an old dude wearing Steve Harvey baggy suits that left you at age five. Crazy. Right? Um, so he goes on to say, confused, always thought you weren't black enough, afraid to grow it because your fro wouldn't nap enough. This goes back to, this goes back to the uh, menstrual show photo, the, the man's hand, sleep and eat, bamboozled, Coon photo that Drake allegedly was was basically his idea to take the photo according to the photographer. This is this looks like a confused as Negro. You know, he looks like a confused as Negro. And like I said, he he was rhyming over Pusha T was rhyming over the story of OJB. The story of OJ video has animated black caricatures in blackface. The song is not identifying with being black. It's basically anti-black imaging, imagery. Anti-black imagery. This is anti-black imagery. The story of OJ, oh, you just think about that family. That is brilliant. That is brilliant, brilliant work. This will go down in history as one of the greatest diss tracks and I'm not living, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a prisoner of the moment. I'm, I have to analyze this. If you can analyze this and break this down, you understand how brilliant this diss track is. Everything is a package deal from the lyrics to the presentation to the imagery was perfectly concocted. Great, great stuff. All right, so um, he goes on to say, afraid to grow it cause your fro wouldn't nap enough. Since you name dropped my fiance, let them know who you chose as your Beyonce. Sophie knows better. Ask your baby mother. Like I said, Sophie is the alleged porn star or stripper or whatever that has a child, that has an illegitimate child with Drake. Okay? Clean her up on IG, but the stench is on her. Hmm. Clean her up on IG, but the stench is on her. Now, you go back to the first line that I read. If you think about it, that's an entendre, right? Sophie knows better. Ask your baby mother. Clean up her, clean her up for IG, but the stench is on her. So you can put knows as in knowing, and you can also put the word no as in knows. Sophie knows, as in plural. 
Listen, man, that's some great writing right there. You got to catch those bars. Um, he goes on to say, a baby's involved. It's deeper than rap. We talk in character. Let me keep with the facts. You are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. Deadbeat motherfucker playing border patrol. Okay. Adonis is your son. Is your son. And he deserves more than an Adidas press run. That's real. Now let me let me let me double back for a second. Deadbeat motherfucker playing border patrol. Ooh. Now I haven't done research on that line, but when he was referring to deadbeat motherfucker playing border patrol, he's basically saying you're a deadbeat father and you're trying to play games. You're trying to play games with your son, right? At whatever time that you want to spend with your son, if you're trying to spend time with your son. But also because Drake's in Canada, uh, I believe that the chick is not from Canada. She's probably from the States. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, you guys correct me in the comment section. I don't think the chick Sophie, whatever her name is, is not is is not from Canada. She's from the states. So border patrol, meaning that he's Drake's in Canada, and his son, his uh, uh, alleged son, is in the states. So that's a play on words as well. That's another entendre. That's the border patrol line. Again, you got to break this stuff down. All right. So he goes on to say, and he deserves more than an Adidas press run. That's real. Love that baby, respect that girl, forget she's a porn star, let her be your world. How dare you put yay in my verses? I'm selfish, I want all the curses. He's basically saying, I want all the smoke. Stop missioning yay, stop missioning Quentin Miller. I want all the smoke. I'm pre-booking the churches. Me versus three hearses. Interesting line. I'm pre-booking the churches, me versus Three hearses. Interesting line. He could be talking about that he's going up against. Basically, he's only he's only going up, or he's actually pre, he's actually setting up some other lines that are coming after this about two of the one, two of the greatest rappers of all time, arguably Biggie and uh, Tupac, and the other hearse. He's probably going to talk about himself. That's what I'm thinking. But anyway, if we all go to hell, it'll be worth it. Already aligned with the greats and on the same note, the only ones I chase are two ghosts. The two ghosts, like I said, Biggie Tupac. Still giving you classic. That's the only thing that dates me. OVO 40, hunch over like he 80. Tick, tick, tick. This line here, OVO 40, he's, he's referencing 40, one of the main producers or the producer that basically worked with Drake from day one, which is, uh, I got his Twitter up. Here he is right here. Okay. This is Noah. His name is Noah Shabib, AKA 40, OVO 40 right here. That's who he's referring to. Now the diss track came out. Well, today, well, today is 30, but it came out yesterday, yesterday night, the 29th. Right. Um, as you can see here, it says, coincidentally, tomorrow is World MS Day, as in multiple sclerosis. For those who don't know, OVO 40 was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, which I did not know myself as I just recently researched. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. He tweeted out yesterday that MS World Day is the 30th okay today is the 30th just just now again strategic plan he talked about OVO 40 being sick and he used that as a double entendre to say that he's sick as well as an MC as a lyricist <laughs> all right so uh, Pusha goes on to say how much time he got that man is six 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 crazy so referring to himself and 40 I got the devil flow, nigga, 666. Surgical summer with it, snip, snip, snip. And you don't really want it with him. Crazy. And here's the outro. He's talking about 
um, his album Daytona is uh, the album of the year. It's arguably one of the best albums this year so far for sure. I, I definitely, I definitely uh, agree with him on that. Um, and then he talks about Drake's uh, new single he just released this past weekend called I'm Upset. I thought the record wasn't bad at all. It wasn't a bad record, but uh, Pusha T was like, man, you said you talk about you upset. Well, I want to see how you are when you're angry. <laughs> you know, you got all these millions of dollars and you live in life fat, you know, you know, fabulously. But you talk about you upset. You're supposed to be a squeaky clean guy. This is basically what, what Pusha T was trying to say. Um, and that's it, man. That, that, like I said, the track is everything was was laid out so methodical it was was laid out it was just like Pusha T said it was surgical and he has more so he did his not only he did his research he just sat back studied and he got more stuff on deck man I, it's going to be interesting to find, like I said it's going to be interesting this is going to be a great summer in terms of hip hop you know um, this is going to be interesting to find out what Drake's next move is for me the narrative for Drake is forever tarnished. I'm going to know him as this guy here. There's nothing that you can. I, I was just shocked that this photo is even online. Like you're you're this big of a uh, of a, a celebrity, of, a, of an entertainer, and you have this photo still online. Either somebody on your team, Drake, needs to be fired, or you just don't care. But for me, this photo here forever changes the narrative of Drake. I see him now as a guy that is a menstrual show, a walking, talking, buck dancing coon, right? That's who I see this guy as now. You know, that's who I see this guy as. This is you and allegedly, like I said, the photographer mentioned, the photographer mentioned on Twitter that Drake, it was Drake's idea to do this photo. This was all Drake's idea, allegedly, according to. So this is this has a, lo a whole lot of stories that people can talk about. People can do further investigation of the of the so-called illegitimate child. People would do interviews on that with with Sophie. Um, people have to address the the Drake uh, Drake in blackface. You know, people are going to talk about that, why that came about, right? Um, people are going to address, you know, the, the history of his father and how his father affects his, his, his childhood. There is a whole lot that people can follow up regarding this story. And like I said, it's going to be interesting to find out what Drake, excuse me, what Drake has in store for the next go round. But like I said in my last video, um, Pusha T is up. He's up right now this round. He is definitely up. This was not only a haymaker, this was, um, well, at this point, neither one of these guys can end somebody's career. We all know that, 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 that goes without saying. Drake is at his level, Pusha T is at his level. All right, let's set the money and the popularity, popularity aside. They're at a place in their professions that their careers can't end. Their career, their their image though can be changed. Can be you know the narrative of their image can be changed, but it won't end their career. Drake can still be a multi-million dollar coon, a buck dancing coon, dressed in blackface. That's how I'm going to remember a uh, 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 Drake. Just like Pusha T can be. A so-called drug dealer that's fabricating selling drugs. He is he's still going to go off and being one of the greatest um, as a just a rap god, you know, a legend in terms of his his contribution in hip hop, you know. Um, but like I said, man, this 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 is a great um, this is a great just uh, moment in hip hop. To, to, to have these guys go at it and, and just to keep it on wax. Nothing physical, nobody shooting, nobody fighting, nobody getting killed. You know, this is all on wax. And I'm looking forward to, you know, more stuff to come.
this is great stuff. But this image right here, this forever changed the perception for me on Drake. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? That's me. All right, family. So that was my breakdown of the lyrics. Uh, leave your comments down below about um, the Pusha T track. Let me know if you guys are anticipating a Drake response. Uh, let me know how you guys felt about both of the diss tracks from uh, Pusha T and uh, Drake. All right, family. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Make sure you follow me on social media at GMOG Media TV. All links are down below in the description. If you're new to the channel, hit the bell notification icon and subscribe to the channel. All right, for up and coming latest videos. Until next time, family Chauncey, aka the Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.